This video is about proof by contradiction with rational numbers. So first let's have a recap of what a rational number is. It's a number that can be written as a fraction, a over b, where a and b have no common factors apart from 1. So for example, 5 is a rational number because I can write it as 5 over 1, and 5 and 1 have no common factors. There's no other number that goes into them, both, apart from 1. 3.5 is a rational number, because I could write 3.5 as 7 over 2. And again, 7 over 2. 7 and 2 have no common factors. There's no number that goes into 7 and 2 apart from 1. 0.6 recurring is a rational number. 0.6 recurring is the same thing as 2 over 3. And again, 2 and 3 have no common factors apart from 1. Let's now have a look at three examples of irrational numbers. So an irrational number is a number that can't be written as a fraction. Pi is an irrational number. Euler's number, E, is also irrational, can't be written as a fraction. And we're going to prove this one in a moment. Root 2 is also an irrational number. You cannot write that as a fraction. Before we do that, though, let's do a simple proof by contradiction with irrational numbers. So... The question is to prove by contradiction that the sum of a rational and an irrational number must be irrational. So I'm going to start off by writing down my assumption, which is going to be the opposite statement. So instead of having a rational and an irrational adding up to make an irrational, my opposite statement is that a rational and an irrational will actually add up to be a rational number. So these two statements are the same, and this is the opposite statement. Right, so I've said that my rational number, I'll call that A, my irrational number, I'll call that B, and the result of that, I'll call that C. Because A is rational, I can write that as M over N, where M and N are integers with no common factor apart from 1. Because B is irrational, I can't write that as a fraction, so I'll just leave that as B. C is rational, according to my assumption, so I'm going to write that as x over y, where x and y are uh, integers with no common factors. What I've then done is I've then made b the subject by subtracting m over n from both sides. So subtracting m over n, and that gives b equals x over y minus m over n. I've then just got a common denominator by multiplying both the x and the y by n and multiplying both the m and the n by y. And so that's left me with this line here. b is equal to xn minus my over yn. Now, this is a fraction. It's rational. Because I know x, n, m and y are all integers, then x, n minus m, y will be an integer. And y, n will also be an integer. So this is a fraction. It's rational. And that's a contradiction. B was supposed to be irrational. It can't be rational. Therefore, this statement here must be false. There's a contradiction in this statement. Therefore, 
the sum of a rational and an irrational number cannot be rational, and it must be irrational. And so the sum of a rational and an irrational number is irrational, and we've proved it. Second proof, and this is a really common proof that you're asked to do, to prove that root 2 is irrational. You might be asked to prove root 3 or root 5 or root 7, some, something like that. It's always the same proof, following the same steps. So it's really important you learn these steps and memorise them, because you will be asked to replicate it. So we want to prove that root 2 is irrational. I've started by writing down my assumption, which is the opposite statement. So assume that root 2 is rational. Because I've said that root 2 is rational, I should be able to write it as a fraction, as a over b, where a and b have no common factors apart from 1. What I've then done is I've just squared both sides. So squared the 2, squared the root 2, sorry, and then squared the a over b. So I've got 2 equals a squared over b squared. I've then just multiplied both sides by b squared. So I get 2b squared equals a squared, or just a squared equals 2b squared. So the fact that I've got a squared is equal to 2b squared that means that a squared is even. The fact I've got 2 times b squared there, that's telling me that a squared has to be even. Which means that a also has to be even. Now we did actually prove this statement in the previous video. Just as a quick recap of that in case you can't remember how we did that. The proof is here. This is how we proved that if a squared is even, then a also has to be even. So go back and re-watch that video if you want the more thorough proof of that statement. So considering we now know that a has to be even as well, that allows me to write a is equal to 2 times k. Because I know a is an even number, I know it's in the 2 times table, so 2 times something, 2 times k. Right, next step. I've replaced that a with 2k here. So 2k squared is equal to 2b squared. 2k squared, 2k times 2k is 4k squared equals 2b squared. And then I've divided both sides by 2 to get that 2k squared is equal to b squared. And so, similar to what we had previously, I've got b equals 2 times something. Sorry, b squared is equal to 2 times something. And so that's telling me that b squared is even. And if b squared is even, that means that b. If b squared is even, that means that b is even. So what we've done is we've shown that a has to be even and b has to be even. And if a and b are both even, they are both in the 2 times table, and they will both have a common factor of 2. But that's a contradiction because a and b should not be able to have a common factor of 2. They should have no common factors apart from 1. So there's a contradiction there. Therefore, this statement saying root 2 is equal to a over b, where a and b have no common factors, that must be false. And therefore, root 2 cannot be rational and it must be irrational. And there we go. That is how we prove that root 2 is irrational.